Hey guys, it's just Kate here from Secret Bloggers Business. Uh, excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cold. Um, so I think I <clears throat> sound a little very white-ish at the moment, which is probably not the worst thing in the world. Anything to, uh, you know, soften off an Australian accent, I always think is a good thing. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to um, jump in and answer a question that I got asked in our Facebook group today. Um, so one of the girls jumped in and wanted to know about a new program that she'd seen that apparently was driving loads and loads of traffic to blogs, but it wasn't really very qualified traffic. And that was just basically, it was, a, I think it's called Flipboard. So I think the idea is that basically people kind of go around and you get like a big burst of traffic and then it kind of moves on and gets sent somewhere else. And they were just wanting to know about whether or not that was something that was worth pursuing. Um, and my response with any of these things is generally no. I know they can seem so attractive, this shiny new thing is like, oh, I'm going to get, you know, an extra couple of thousand people on my blog today. But really, what does that mean? And what is that even worth? And what is the quality of those people? So the problem with all these things, and they keep popping up, like every six months or so, there's a new thing. And it's like the new cool way to get traffic to your blog. And it normally is um, it's normally one of those things that sounds a little bit too good to be true and that's because it is and the problem with these quick fixes is as they come and go they're not normally around for all that long but they also they don't drive readers they drive traffic so you might get a spike one day or maybe even for a couple of months depending on how long what the setup of this particular thing is or how you do it but I bet you most of those people will never come back again. They're not the kind of people who are going to comment. They're not the kind of people who are going to join your email list. Like it's really just sending a flood of useless rubbish to your site. Like some of them could be good, but the thing is, it's probably going to get more, you'll get more relevant people by doing the other, I know, slower growing stuff for your blog. And I know it seems so attractive. It's like, oh, but I just, you know, just a quick win would be amazing. Um, and there are quick wins that are like legit and work and will get you readers. But normally if it's anything that's just sending you a big flurry of traffic out of nowhere, um, that then that traffic, you know, moves on kind of thing, like just a quick bam of traffic, it's just not useful. You don't need it. It might even crash your blog, which is going to cause you tech problems, um, which can cost you money. So I just, all that stuff, yeah, I just, I, I, avoid, I don't bother with it. And the thing is, as if you had everything else on your blog completely sorted and you had all this free time and you want to start playing with that stuff, go ahead. But usually these quick fixes, it's taking you away from the stuff that you should be doing, right? Like it's going to distract you from the stuff that you know works and it's going to take you away from creating the amazing content and all that stuff. And that means that actually you're going to be a start because you're out there chasing this traffic, this non-quality traffic, instead of focusing on growing your readers, you're actually going to be going backwards. Like it's actually usually detrimental. So that's why I'm like, sure, if you've got the spare time, if everything else is sorted and you've got, you know, you're creating your amazing content regular and you're, you know, you're commenting and all the other stuff. And I'm going to go through a few other things which do work really well. Um, in a minute once I finish my rant, um, then, you know, if you've got the spare time, sure, go for it. Why not? But if you don't have the spare time, like if you don't feel like you're getting everything you need to get done on your blog, don't add another thing to your list when the payoff isn't worth it. Um, it really does come down to going, okay, well, what, what do I actually get out of this? Like, what does a big boost of traffic mean? And again, I know, as I said, it is really tempting and particularly people as they're starting, like you just want that validation. You want someone to read your blog. You want, you know, it makes you like feel like it's all worthwhile. Um, but the problem is it's, and you know, it's, I said validation is always good. It was going to encourage you and it's going to keep you going. But usually, as I said, it's, it's all going to be even more unvalidating if that's even a word, or at least more upsetting when that traffic's gone again and you, you can't get it back. And now you're kind of back to square one and you realize you've kind of wasted this time. And there are people who almost dedicate, like I, and I've, I've been guilty of this myself. I've been blogging for 10 years. When I first started, I did, I chased, I was trying all these things and trying all these like weird traffic hacks and all this stuff and spending so much time on that. Whereas if I had just been like, it got back to the basics and done 
the slow and steady but reliable way of growing, then I probably would have grown even faster. And particularly with my first blog, I probably would have monetized it even better than I did. Um, so that's my that's my uh, tip on going after the too good to be trues. Um, but what does work? So uh, I'm not just going to tell you what you can't, what you shouldn't do. Um, obviously, you know you probably have that inkling at the back of your head about that anyway, but what does work? Like what are some things that you can do to give your blog a bit of a boost um, and like a quality boost, like a boost that's actually going to be worth your time. That's actually going to attract the right readers. Um, so that's the other thing. I feel like when you are doing the right stuff on your blog, you, the readers almost come to you. Like you attract readers, whereas you chase traffic. So you want to be attracting them. Like that's just what, a way better place to be in. Um, so, okay, what does work? Um, firstly, um, oh, thank you, Andrea. Um, firstly, what works is... And I, I know this is basic, but it's something that we all kind of forget is creating great content consistently. So if, um, and my kind of, my tip with this, and anyone who's watched a few of these, I know I say that this a lot, but that's because a lot of the time this is where people, like it's, this is blogging 101, but it's so much where people fall down. Um, but your priority, num your number one priority needs to be creating amazing, amazing value packed content, like the kind of content that makes people go, oh my God, this person just gets me. Oh, wow, this is so useful. Oh, I've always wanted to know how to do that. Oh, this looks really cool. I'm going to go try it. Like you want them to have that response. And the problem with creating that kind of content is yes, it normally takes a little bit more time. So if you're um, set your blog up so that you're having to create so many posts that you don't actually have the time to make each post amazing, then my tip would be to you to try and reduce the number of posts that you're creating and have fewer but better quality posts. And the other part of that is you have to be consistent. So you, to be consistent, you normally need to be realistic with yourself. You normally need to say, okay, well, like realistically, how much can I do in a week? Um, and I know we all kind of, especially at the start, we're like, oh yeah, it only takes me like an hour or two to do a post and I can totally whip this up and, you know, I'll do 10 posts a day and I'll be fine. Um, but it's never, you know, life happens, stuff gets in the way. Um, oh, thank you, Jen. I hope it's useful. Um, and, you know, it's just, you've got to be realistic. Don't overcommit at the start. It's always better to almost undercommit and do that amazingly. And then if you want to add extra stuff later, you can rather than to overcommit and then under, you know, under deliver. And then that leaves your readers feeling a little bit jibbed. Um, yes, attract, don't chase. <laughs> it does work very well with men as well. Laurie. <laughs> Good to know. Um, so, Create amazing content consistently. And as I said, if your current schedule does not allow you to do that, time to get real, time to slash a few things out. If you have to drop back to how often you're posting so you can make those posts amazing and really regular and reliable, do that. Um, next thing, this is, and this is one thing that a lot of bloggers kind of resist doing. I think it feels a little bit scary or perhaps don't go about it the right way. But one of the things that can work so well with growing your audience, growing your reach is to team up with other bloggers. Um, so I was actually last week, I was at a mastermind retreat. Uh, Lewis Howes was running. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with him. And I was chatting to this girl and she'd built in a year an amazing YouTube following, like hundreds of thousands of followers. Um, her Instagram is also insane. And this is in 12 months and I was like I said to her well this you know this is amazing like what what did you do and her main thing her main tip well one was creating amazing content consistently she was um doing a video a day which is a lot she's since cut back because she found that that was too much um and the other thing was she was reaching out to other people in her niche um who were perhaps similar or even better at the next level above and they were creating stuff together and sharing it with both of their audiences. So, you know, she was introducing her audience to them. They were introducing their audience to her. And, you know, this is how she was able to grow so quickly. And I know at the start when you're starting out and you don't have much of an audience, it can kind of feel like you don't have anything to offer. And normally the best way to kind of approach this stuff is to start with some people in a similar level 
So you kind of, you do, you grow a little bit to start with and then, but don't be afraid to go for the bigger ones, but you just have to, there's a few things you need to do. Firstly, you need to go in there with the, from a position of adding value, not just, I want access to your audience. Um, you should promote me kind of thing because they get that stuff all the time and they don't need to do anything. Like you need to come at them with something that's really valuable. And normally the best way of doing that is saying, Hey, I can create this thing for your audience. I think your audience might be interested in this. Um, May, and, the, and the other thing is, if you really want to get cut through, is to actually try and go out there and, you know, maybe send them an, an actual letter or something, like do something different. They get so many emails. You've got to break through the cut through. Um, the other thing she said was just, she was just commenting on people's, you know, other influences in her space. They became kind of like Insta friends, you know, like you're commenting on people's posts and they start commenting on yours. And it that was all very organic, but then it came like a, hey, you know, we're having a little bit of a love fest here. Why don't we do something together? So all of that, as I said, it's like the, the joint venture stuff. That's what they call it in business, joint ventures. That's how most businesses grow is by teaming up with another brand or business. They create strategic partnerships. Bloggers can do this as well. Um, I said, there's no like, and even better is it's free. It just, you basically have to come up with something that's going to work for both of your audiences and away you go. And if I said it, like if you kind of go back to the first point where you sort of bring back to creating great content, but maybe not as regularly, you probably have a little bit of extra time to do this stuff as well. So joint ventures work so, so well. Um, challenges is another thing that works, particularly like challenges paired with the Facebook group. Um, so running a challenge, particularly if it's something like, if you know who your target market is and how you can help them, and this is something you, you would need to do to be able to create great content from them in the first place. And there's all stuff that we like, in all my courses, I make people go through and figure this stuff out right up front. But if you know how to, to be really helpful and useful to your audience, it'll probably be something that kind of stands out as a kind of a, almost like a first step of something that you can do that's really going to be useful to them and helpful to them. Um, and you can turn this into a challenge. Normally like a five, five to 10 days is normally the sweet spot because most people do drop off. Um, like you'll struggle to get people to do all five days or something, to be honest. So 30 days is usually like never going to happen. Um, but you know, running free challenges regularly as part of your blogging schedule. So whether you do it every three months or every six months, whatever, and you make it a free challenge and you make it as simple as, as you like, it can just be five emails that you send out, but you get everyone to come and join to a Facebook group and you maybe do a few Facebook lives. Everyone's doing it together. What this does is because you're giving away great value, you're creating an experience, you're creating engagement, you know, you end up with this tribe of people who feel really connected to you, who are really like super pumped about what you're doing. You know, you take, bring your friends, they will, they'll tell people about it, you know, they'll share stuff and this creates a real buzz around you and what you're doing and challenges just work so well. And at the start, you can do them with, you know, you don't have to spend any money at all. Facebook groups are free. Your email, you should already have an email service. So it's not adding any extra cost. Um, and then you just, you know, you promote it around. If you find a challenge is working well for you, you might want to add a bit of budget to when you're getting people in like Facebook ads, stuff like that. Um, and again, you can go, you know, double whammy, team up with some other bloggers and do a big challenge together. Split the work, share the audience. It's win-win for everybody. So that works. Another thing which still works for now, it probably won't work forever, is Pinterest. Pinterest is still one of the best ways to drive quality traffic to your blog without spending any money. Um, it is a slow burn, but if you do it right and do it consistently for about three months, you should start to see something happening after about first month. After about three months, you should be able to, you know, start to see those numbers really kicking off. Six months, it should be, you know, growing quite nicely. The thing to remember with Pinterest is it's all these days, Pinterest is all algorithmed up the wazoo, but Pinterest is basically Google with images. So Pinterest is a search engine. You use, treat Pinterest like if you know how to do basic SEO for your blog posts, like so how to come up with a couple of keywords and how to kind of sprinkle them through your content, if you know how to do that in a blog post, do that with your pins. So, you know, through the sprinkling them through the description, through the names of your boards, all that stuff that will help you get found more on Pinterest and also coming up with really good ones um, that people are actually searching for. That's like, this is a whole nother topic, but Pinterest still works. So what we've got here, we've got great content, joint ventures, challenges, 
Pinterest at the moment, and this one, I don't know how long it's going to work, but Insta stories are working really well um, just because not everyone's doing them yet and because they kind of come up at the top of Instagram. So that's another thing I would jump on ASAP and video on Facebook lives. Facebook live used to be like the golden goose. It got shown way more in algorithms than the rest of Facebook. Um, and oh, sorry, Dan just asked a question. I've never blogged and don't have a biz yet. Just ideas. What is the best way to get started? Um, best way to get started is to just, literally just to start. Um, I do have a bunch of program. I actually have a program called Start Your Blog with a Bang. If you're wanting a bit more of a framework around this, um, go to secretbloggersbusiness.com. You can check it out. But it uh, basically takes you through the process of getting started. Um, but if you're just literally wanting to get started, then I would go find, you know, get yourself. You need you need to figure out your platforms, whether you're going to use WordPress or Squarespace. Um, they seem to be the main popular ones at the moment get yourself set up, write a few posts and just go. Cause normally there's the getting started. And the thing is people are really um, worried when they start about making stuff perfect. To be absolutely honest, no one's going to read your blog for the first few months. So you can, you have a bit of time to play and to make mistakes and to get into your groove and to figure stuff out first before really like before people other than your mum and dad and cat actually are reading stuff. So don't be afraid. Don't wait till it's perfect to start it. Just, start it. But as I said, I do have actually have a program called Start Your Blog With A Bang if you want a bit more of a like, framework, step by step, do this, do this, do this. Um, so yeah, so that's it, that's it guys. That was, that was my mini, mini rant and I hope, I really hope it was helpful. Um, if you did think it was helpful, like, you know, give us a thumbs up or a heart because um, that means more people will see it. Yay, Facebook algorithms. Um, and I'd love it if you could share with any other bloggers that you know because maybe this will be useful for them as well. Um, I do... Yeah, awesome. Don't yeah, no, don't let fear stop you. Fear is like fear, procrastination, all that stuff, bloggers' worst enemy. Um So ah have you having issues with focus on blog content? I am running a free workshop at the moment. Um it's called how to plan out your best blog and busy year ever. Uh, all you need to do is go to jointheblogparty.com and you can jump in and join us. They're actually on tomorrow and Thursday, they're live. So I'm gonna show people how to plan out their, how to come up with loads of ideas, how to plan out their whole year's worth of content. So make sure you guys come along to that if you're wanting to get really, really focused. Um, I'm also gonna share a bunch of tips for actually getting more done in the week. So you've got time to do all this stuff like Pinterest and joint ventures and all that stuff. So I said it's, join the blog party.com. Yes, come along, join. It's free. I'm also giving away my blog planner free to everyone who attends, um, which is a digital uh, PDF version. Um, it's, you know, it's beautiful. I'm really proud of it. And it's super useful. It's not just like a day planner. It's got all this other cool stuff in there to help you track and grow your blog. And we're going to have some prizes. I'm going to be giving away some bunch of stuff at the end as well. So make sure you come along to that. So join the blog party.com. Um, and yeah, that's it, guys. I said, hopefully I will see you all at the workshop tomorrow. I can't believe it's tomorrow. It's, the year is flying by. Um, and I've got so much. I need to actually go and finish my presentation for that now. But it's it's got it's pretty jam-packed. So awesome. Oh, yay. Awesome, Laura. Well, I will see you there. So that's it, guys. As I said, um, yeah, hopefully I will see you all tomorrow or on Thursday. Have an awesome Monday or Sunday, depending on where you are. And yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.